Hey everyone, Scott here to discuss Bo is Afraid, starring Joaquin Phoenix, Patti Lapone, Amy Ryan, Nathan Lane, Kylie Rogers, Den Dennis Minoshe, forgive me if I said that wrong, and Parker Posey, and directed by Ari Aster. Now, this is the one I was kind of fearing going in, but I did go twice, and I'm not very proud of it. Let's get into the review and you'll see why. We get a point of view of Bo Wasserman, played by Joaquin Phoenix, being born with sounds that are obviously obnoxious. And next thing you know, Bo visits his therapist the day he, before he visits his mother, Mona, played by Paddy Lapoon. And the therapist asks, how does it feel to visit his mother after all these years? And the shots director, Ari Aster, is shooting as interesting as the therapist asks Bo if he wants his mother dead or not. And gives a smooth drug to drink always water with it to take the pill as he gets out of there and gets a statue for his mother. And a man may or may not jump off a, off screen, jump off a roof as he lives in New York. And Bo almost bumps into a tattoo homeless man as he goes up to his apartment and eats a frozen meal. And this movie is 10 minutes in, and I already feel like this could be a shorter movie, as this is a longer, this is one of the longest movies that Ari Aster has done previous movies. And this needed a lot cut out of it, as it's a mess of a movie, while it's a pain in the ass to sit through twice in one day. I wouldn't recommend doing that. The three hours of this torturous movie that doesn't know what the fuck fuck it wants to be like is this a horror movie is this a comedy is this a drama is this a fucking thriller as i was having that problem from the get-go bo gets a neighbor handling notes handing out notes underneath the door in the middle of the night three different times and there's this is some obnoxious neighbor as he blasts his music louder while Bo isn't blasting his music, which is the weirdest thing as Bo wakes up the next day to go to the airport and someone stole his keys and the landlord throws away the, his keys and says he's fucked and he can't make it to the airport because his keys were stolen. And he calls his mother about the key situation and for a while she doesn't say anything while Bo asks what the right thing to do is and eventually she hangs up which is a very odd scene. The water in his apartment isn't working at first while he doesn't have any more bottles of water and types up what side effects, what the side effects are and goes to the convenience store to get some water that's across the street from his apartment while he leaves his, a phone book in between the door. He goes to the convenience store to get some water while the tattoo homeless man waits for him and all the homeless people go into his apartment complex while the landlord closes the door and they get in Bo's apartment and have a party there. And Bo wakes up the next day and sees all the homeless people are at his complex has broken glass everywhere, I'll say. And finds the tattooed homeless man dead while trying to call 911. But this movie is slowing, slowing way the hell down. And... I don't get what the fuck the point of the movie really is, as this is first 30 minutes goes absolutely nowhere as does the rest of this fucking movie. Bo's about to take a bath while he tries to get a plane ticket for the night while his credit card is declined and he calls his mother as the UPS man picks up the phone to only tell him she is dead and the UPS man is voiced by Bill Hader. And what's he doing here? And what was weird about that scene is he hangs up and tries to call his mother's phone to only hear his voice again. And what was weird was people were laughing at this movie a bunch of times on my first viewing. And I was thinking, what the hell is so goddamn funny about anything in this fucking movie? As it's not trying to be funny. And every time someone in the audience laughed, I thought to myself, oh, Jesus, what the fuck is so funny about what is happening in this movie? And that bugged me a hell of a lot on my first viewing. And as his bathtub was overflowing and he gets in and sees a homeless man on his wall. 
and as he gets down, he suffocates him in the water, and the score in that scene was terrible. As this whole scene is just terrible. We see a naked killer trying to kill Bo, and as he encounters a cop, he runs away and gets ran over by a family named, named Grace, played by Amy Ryan, and Roger, played by Nathan Lane, along with their daughter Tony, played by Kylie Rogers, as they take him to their home at the as a hospital patient from Roger. And I don't know what Nathan Lane is doing in this movie, and we see the naked homeless man stabbing him in the side, as well as the hand quite a few times. And I gotta say, Tony comes off like a bitch in this movie, to not only to Bo, but her parents as well as... And honestly, the characters are a bit stale for me, as Bo is mildly the best thing about the movie, as Joaquin Phoenix is a good actor in general. Their son, Nate, short for Nathan, was killed by the in the war, but they bring back Jeeves, played by Dennis Minashe, from the hospital, and as I get the impression he doesn't like Bo too much, while Bo is on the phone with Dr. Cohen, as Bo's mother wishes is to get buried when Bo is there, and this scene was just ugh, painful, while the actor Dennis Menache, whom I reviewed before in the French Dispatch, Hannibal Rising, and most famous for briefly playing a French farmer in Quentin Tarantino's The Glorious Bostons, and he comes off pretty unlikable here, but he turns in good films after Bo says he has to get home that very day, and Roger says he'll take him the next day. And as the night comes, I hear A Thousand Miles by Vanessa Carlton playing in the background, and I do like that song, but it was used unnecessarily in this movie. Roger gets an emergency call from a friend, and he has no choice but to take Bo to his mother's place by the next day. And these scenes are taking way too long, as this movie is overstretching to a three-hour movie, and it's very fucking infuriating. Grace writes a note saying, Do not incriminate yourself, while later in the day, Bo looks at a news clip as he vomits on Tony's computer, and he goes with Tony and her friend to a ride with her saying she, he needs to smoke some pot while her friend blackmails him with Tony to smoke it or else they'll lie they'll tell the lie that Bo tried to kill her which is not true first off and that's why I really hate the character Kylie Richards just Rogers is playing I hate the character and Kylie Rogers I wanted to say I don't know who you are but I don't like your character in this movie. We flash back to Bo as a teenager on a cruise with Mona while he meets Elaine Bray as a teenager and have a brief romance on the ship that doesn't feel realistic as I'm led to believe it was forced as they were teenagers and asks him to wait for him later in life while eventually she'll work for Mona later in her years which felt like a weird connection after all these years for Bo in this movie. Meanwhile, Jeeves tries to attack Bo, thanks to Tony, and I was just bored with this movie. As Roger wants to say goodbye with a, a little barbecue while Grace tells Bo to watch Channel 78, as it's a camera-filled place, which is so fucking creepy, by the way, while it seems the future, and she... and Tony paints her brother's room with his name and acts all psychopathic and shit. And she drinks the paint as it kills her. And Grace sees it and she wonders what he did he do to her. And he runs out while Jeeves goes after him as Tony got what she wanted, which is too manipulative. As people thinking he killed her when he killed when he didn't as Kylie Richards. And like I said... I don't know who you are, but this may be your worst performance to this day, as it was very annoying. As Bo hits a log to get to a place in the middle of the woods where he sees a play, and this is when I wanted the movie to seriously move along, as this is rough and just horrible to watch. They get to a village where they do a play, and the play begins as we see Bo and Elaine getting married with kids of their own, as it was from his in his imagination, and his family got separated thanks to a flood, 
and he arrives in a strange country as he grew older and older, and he bumps into someone who I get the impression is his father, as he said in the beginning of the movie that he doesn't remember his father, or doesn't know who he is, as he eventually reunited with him, with his kids, as well as his kids, as adults, as the story was taking place in the Western, and it felt like it took at least 40 years to tell it. And all of this made me think, what the fuck am I watching at this point? As this is not the movie I signed in for when I was going to do Ari Aster's filmography, and this sequence went on way too long. Meanwhile, there are times we went back to Jeeves searching for Bo, and he, as he's successful, but doesn't necessarily kill Bo, as he shocks Bo, and I'm, and I'm on the, and I'm on the edge of my seat as all of this is so damn odd. Bo, I guess, had as a brother who gets in the attic for asking where their father is at, and Mona traps him in the attic. As that was, I guess, a bad dream? I wouldn't know anything about that. As he wakes up in the next morning on the freeway and gets someone to drive him to his mother's place, entering a, in a town called Wasserman, which was named after them. And he gets into the house, which was about time, while he missed Mona's funeral, and sees everybody on staff getting things out of the house. As he sees the video of Mona's funeral, as we heard it, but we don't see it, any images of it as it, he was walking around the house until we get at nighttime and he is approached by Elaine Bray as an adult played by Parker Posey. Another actress, I'm thinking, what the fuck is she doing here along with Nathan Lane? And she also misses the funeral and she tries to take an Uber back to her place as she worked for her and reintroduces himself to her and she suddenly remembers him, which was awfully convenient. They go inside the bedroom, and they have a graphic scene of sexual intercourse, which felt the weirdest scene in the movie, in my opinion. But it gets weirder. And let me just say something right now. Before I get to what was weirder, um, there was a couple on my second viewing that left the movie a little earlier and never returned by the end of it. So thank God you knew what was coming. After she dies, as far as the movie is concerned, and that fell out of the blue, Mona comes in more alive than ever and tells her butlers to drag Elaine's naked body, and that is some weird shit that I did not see coming whatsoever, but it's but still, that was the weirdest fucking twist I've ever seen in a movie, as Mona monologues about what Bo did to her in the past as a kid. And I have about 30 minutes of movie left, and I just wanted it to please just end. Bo thinks of getting out of his mother's house as she plays the tape from her therapist while the therapist was in the restroom. And he walks out as the look of Joaquin Phoenix's face looking like he was in complete shock was an interesting choice by Phoenix and director Ari Aster as it made him look afraid, which was the point of the movie, Mona takes Bo to the attic where his brother is locked and all those years ago, and she traps him in the attic in order to know the truth about his father as he sees his brother as a little boy in a beard, and the father looked like a, like a monster of a penis and some ball sack, and Jeeves comes in and tries to kill the monster, but it actually kills Jeeves, and he gets down to the ground while the therapist drags him to his mother, and she told him everything she has done for him, and he insults her while he chokes her and stops after 45 seconds, maybe 30, and she pretends to die once again as Bo walks out of the house and gets a canoe to get him out of the house, and he's stuck in a stadium with people trying to help him, like it's a courthouse filled with thousands of people. And Bo is declared guilty and is flipped under the water until his death. And what the fuck kind of ending is that? As this climax left me completely unsatisfied as it was unfulfilling. And what was the point of sitting three hours in one sitting of a movie that was just horrible to watch from start to finish? I'll never know. Now it's time for my reading. 
I'll give this movie a 2.5 out of 10. Joaquin Phoenix does turn in some great work, or good work, I'll say. Great's too strong of a word for this movie. Despite his character was just fine, in my opinion, as this movie needs a hell of a lot more editing, like at least an hour chopped out of it, as I was wanting this movie to please just end. I hated the characters as Kylie Rogers is the worst actress in the movie, in my opinion, while well, I didn't get why Nathan Lane was chosen to be in this movie, and same with Parker Posey. There were just times people were laughing at the movie as I didn't get what the fuck was so goddamn funny about it. It was a horrible to watch. The climax left me so unsatisfied as it was unfulfilling. As this movie made me check the time more than often than any other movie I've seen as it's too long at three hours. I felt every minute of it as it dragged quite a bit. And this is a solid non-recommendation. Please do not watch this movie when it comes on on video. Please do me that favor. Or streaming. Or anywhere for that matter. So I'd like to thank you guys for joining me for the Ari Aster series. Or filmography, let me rephrase that. And until we get to his next film, let's go with The Strange.